Once again, welcome to my lecture in YouTube channel Professor LPT with a new topic. The today's topic is utilization of intestines. As you know, presently we are discussing about the byproducts utilization in which intestine is one of the important byproducts. So we will discuss about the utilization of intestine mainly for casing preparation and some more preparation and some more utilization what are the different types of casings or natural casings and then we will discuss the basic requirements for processing the details about the processing of intestine even their inspection and grading different kind of defects and the factors which affect the quality and different other uses of intestine here this is only just to have a review about the GI tract, left side it is from pig and the right side from sip and goat. The sip and goat intestines are most commonly used for making sausage casing. So we all know that the, the, the GI tract starting from esophagus till the rectum, the entire portion can be processed into casing. So the esophagus, then stomach, then small intestine, large intestine, even the rectum part both in case of sheep and goat can be processed properly and then it will be used full as sausage container or sausage casing. So let us understand what is casing. So casing is the outer lining from the intestine after processing which is used as the container or which encloses the filling of a sausage. And such casings are called natural casings and there are artificial casings also which we will discuss at the end. These natural casings are edible and in this when the sausage material or batter is stopped automatically it will have some kind of non-uniformity. Because of that easily we can identify the natural casing whereas in case of synthetic casing it will be perfectly uniform throughout so it is easy to identify. So natural casings means it is from the animal intestine after proper processing. So these intestines must be collected from healthy animals during the slaughter process with proper inspection. Whereas the synthetic or artificial casings are made up of cellulose or collagen or other synthetic materials. Once again, let us understand what is natural casings. Natural casings are made from the submucosa layer that is mostly made up of collagen of intestine of farm animals. Mostly farm animals which are slaughtered for meat purpose, their intestine is processed into natural casings. The outer fat and inner mucosa lining are removed by, by scraping or sliming. That's the process in making the in processing the intestine. The natural casings once cooked tend to have a distinctive snap when the sausage is beaten. So because it is made up of collagen when it is cooked it get converted to gelatin and that gives a specific eating experience and that is always preferred during eating sausage. The natural casings are traditional products that have been used for centuries a large variety of sausage is produced worldwide using the processed intestines of pigs, sheep, goats and cattle. In case of cattle also different parts of the GI tract can be processed into casing starting from esophagus, then uh, true stomach or abomasum, then small intestine, large intestine and rectum. The little more details about natural casings. The natural casings are mainly derived from the different part of the intestine of both cattle, sheep, goat, pig, sometimes from horses. They are generally strong enough to resist the pressure produced during filling with sausage batter. So nowadays it is filling is done with the hydraulic pressure. And these natural casings are permeable to water vapor, gases, and also allowing the feelings to dry. These natural casings can absorb the smoke for additional flavor and preservation. So the after feeling these sausages are subjected to smoking and main purpose of smoking is to add the 
special flavor so that flavor will be easily absorbed by the natural casing which will not be absorbed by synthetic casing then finally the expand or shrink firmly attached to the sausage mix so due to the presence of collagen fiber it has a very good elasticity when we fill it with the batter it expands but it will not break and it can be closed easily at the end by tying due to the elastic property on its own it can be tied with a knot due to the elastic property of the collagen there are certain specific terminology or names for the different type of casings from different parts of the gi tract in the trade or in the industry the first one is rounds that is the casings prepared from the small intestine of sheep goat or pig then the runners that is the casings from the small intestine of cattle middles that is the casing from large intestine of cattle or sometimes of pig then we send that is the casings from esophagus of all kind of intestine from different species bung that is the casing from cecum of cattle or buffalo then sip casings means it is the casings from small intestine of sheep goat casings means casings from the small intestine of goat maws or stomachs this is the casings from cleaned pig stomach and the chitterling that is the casings from a part of large intestine of pig so these are the typical terminology comes from the meat industry for the casings prepared from different parts of the intestine from different species of animals now we will discuss about some of the basic requirements for gut processing firstly the gut should be from healthy animals which have been inspected that means it has to undergo the anti mortem inspection and post mortem inspection so that the animal will be disease free and then intestine will be processed because it will go for edible use intestines for processing should not have ulcers and parasitic nodules so when due to many infection or other parasites there will be either ulcer that is mainly due to bacterial infection or parasitic nodules so these things when the intestine is processed leads to the damage to the intestinal wall or due to the nodules it will create a hole so then it becomes useless for actual purpose of sausage casing next sanitary handling should be maintained from slaughter to packing because it is going for human edible use so it has to be fully under sanitary control the product should be clean good color and no objectionable odor that is the final intestine after cleaning and processing it should be thoroughly clean it will be almost transparent and good natural color and no objectionable odor it should have proper length and be sufficiently cured that is it's more the length it is good then only it is easy for actual feeling of the sausage and it should be cured properly that is by preservation with salt either dry dry salting or brine curing only clean sound wholesome pieces free from defects should be selected so these wholesome pieces will be selected for marketing and it will undergo proper packing here we will see at a glance the steps for processing of casing in the left side we can see there is a histological structure of intestine so there we all know four structures histologically in the intestine though it is not easily separable so the from inside there is first mucosa then submucosa then muscularis and serosa out of this four layer the second layer that is the submucous layer is made up of connective tissue that is collagenous fiber which are very strong and elastic and that is the layer actually required for casing purpose so the processing means the other three layers are removed then only it becomes casing so in the process first there is removal of the entire gi tract then both end can be open and internal contents can be removed that is first there is a pulling and then chilling stripping that is removing the internal content then fatting that is outside there will be lot of fat particularly in case of large animal intestine sometime we have to use knife to remove the external fat 
then there is a fermenting it's a natural fermenting by the bacterial action because whatever food particles will be there that helps in fermentation or we can use the chemical solution then there is a sliming process in which the scraping is done to remove the other three layers and in case of beef it is quite tough so it may not be easy to remove all the three layers from outside so sometimes there is a turning that is inside out then only we can remove the other layers after that there is a flushing with water and cleaning then there will be inspection again which is done by flushing and inflating the processed intestine with water and after that there is a measurement like diameter is very very important for grading and the length and then there is preservation mostly in case of small animal it is done in uh, dry salting or wet salting whereas in case of large animal it is done by drying so we will discuss all the steps more details again now we will discuss every step separately the first step is collection of intestine so it should be collected from healthy animals after revisoration as i mentioned it should be only after inspection of the animal such animals should undergo slaughter then casing should be processed as early as possible because if it is delayed there will be too much fermentation and bad smell etc or it should be stored if we cannot process immediately the intestine should be cleaned and stored under refrigeration the separation of small intestine from mesenteric tissues so this is after removing the gi tract the mesenteric tissues will have a adhesion so those things can be removed by pulling but in case of large animals it is not easy so sometime we need to use the knife to remove the intestinal attachments and then it is called as running so after collection and pulling or separating the intestine the next step is stripping and cleaning so stripping of intestine means the removal of semi digested materials and other contents this is to remove the gross materials present in the intestine and this green intestine may be chilled at 10 degrees celsius if the processing is not possible immediately so after stripping the much of the content will go then it can be washed through water the water can be inserted from the proper size of tap then much of the things will be flushed and cleaned and then it can be stored in refrigerator if we don't process immediately otherwise there will be some spoilage or bad order the next step is fermentation the cleaned intestine is fermented by keeping at room temperature for 2 to 3 hours or by dipping in a chemical solution for 2 to 3 minutes and that solution contains 0.2% sodium pyrophosphate and 1% sodium chloride so this fermentation facilitates easy removal of mucous membrane and other slime from other mem other uh, membranes due to bacterial action and this process helps in loosening of intestinal layers so the four layers they are strongly attached in a normal living condition but by the process of fermentation or by using the sliming solution these layers are made loosening and then it is easy to remove all the other layers except the submucous layer that is how fermentation is very important but in natural fermentation there will be sometime uncontrolled situation sometime it may be under fermented or sometime it may be over fermented whereas if we use the chemical solution it will be more uniform the next step is the scraping or removing the slime so it is also called sliming so to understand that once again we need to see the histological structure the four different layers from inside to outside that is the mucosa submucosa muscularis and serosa the outermost layer is serosa so among these three layer the submucous layer is made up of tough connective tissue of collagen and that is the submucous layer we want for actual use other three layers are to be removed that is the principle of processing of intestine to make the casing which we are going to see in the next now the next step after fermentation is scraping and also called as sliming so here the removal of remaining three layers of intestine other than submucous layer 
that is the serosa, muscularis and mucosa. All these three layers are removed by this process of scrapping. So this removal is mainly from mucous membrane from inside and the outside that is the muscularis and serosa for which some blunt wooden knife or plastic knives are used and this knife is placed at an angle of about 30 degree. So this intestine after fermentation is placed over tables preferably either stainless steel or maybe the marble that kind of table should be used and it should be moist and watery and by placing the scrapping knife we can remove the layers slowly and gently whereas in case of cattle and buffalo these intestines are quite tough and these outer layers are not easy to remove particularly the inner layer also cannot be fully clean so in this case that is in case of cattle and buffalo the intestine is turned inside out so this is an additional step called turning and again sliming is done then only all the three layers can be efficiently removed now after scrapping or sliming the next step is cleaning and washing so these intestine one end will be slipped on a suitable type of tap and it is flushed with water and that will remove all the contents inside and then it should look very clean and transparent if it is so then only we can see that it is properly done or processed now the next step is inspection after pro processing or sliming then cleaning we need to inspect what is the condition so again it is observed after filling with water we should see that only submucous layer is there and no other layer is available and it should look very transparent free from nodules or holes or any damages so if we fill it with water if there is any damage it will be very clearly visible or if there was any nodule it may create a holes and then the water will leak very fast then we should see if there is any defects like black spots mainly it happens due to bacterial infection or other holes laceration puncture or leakages etc now after inspection once it is found to be satisfactory we need to do some observations or measurement so again it will be filled with water and measurement will be done particularly for diameter the color should be white or clean and width of water filled intestine in case of sheep and goat whereas in case of cattle it will be inflated with air and then it is measured with the help of a calibrated casing gauge in the left side photograph we can see in case of small intestine of sheep and goat it is filled with water and measured in a calibration gauge and the calibration gauge is kept at the uh, above in the photograph which shows for 14 16 18 20 22 and 24 that is the mm diameter where it should fit accordingly we can say the diameter it is a rough measurement and then length is measured with the help of measuring tapes and it is expressed as hands so these things helps in grading now the next step is grading so basically grading is done based on the calibration that is the diameter and then there are three different grade in case of sheep and goat the first one that is the best quality it should have natural color intact wall no torn or lacerated good strength should not burst with inflation by water or air that is in case of large animal when it is dried actually then the grade 2 it may have some discoloration whereas in case of grade 3 there can be some nodules also present so these are the three different grade in case of sheep and goat casing grading now the next step is preservation sheep and goat casings are preserved by salting with clean fresh salt of medium thickness it can be dry salting or wet salting dry salting means only powder is applied but it should be very fine crystals wet salting means we can make solution brine solution that is 40 percent sodium chloride solution in which it can be dipped and even it can be packed in containers also so these casings are turned in salt several times if it is dry salting in case of cattle casings they are inflated with air and then they are dried under shade 
in a fly proof area so after drying it is a best way of preservation and best practice in case of large animal casings so these are later deflated that air will be removed and it will be pressed and then it is flattened and in then it is measured in unit of hangs and cut in proper length now the next step is packing so in case of sheep and goat casing there is wet salting so they can be packed in metal or plastic containers which will have a inside layer of plastics or polyethylene sometime the unit packing is done directly in plastic bags and then all of them together put into bulk packing in big box or barrels in case of dried cattle casings they are coiled on wooden wheels and then packed in barrels with recommended insecticides now we have fully discussed about the process of making casing here are some of the important factors which influence the quality of casing the first is cleanliness so the after cleaning it should be thoroughly clean and sound devoid of any fat or any dirts nodules defects next is the strength so it should have good stretchability it should be able to withstand pressure because when these casings are filled with batter to make sausage it has to withstand that pressure then diameter is one of the very important criteria so higher the diameter better is the grade in case of sheep and goat commonly it is 14 mm whereas in pig it is 35 mm in case of beef it is 35 mm for small intestine then length is also very important so in case of sheep and goat sheep and pig it is 91.4 meter and in case of cattle round it is 180 meter that is how the length that is called hank then curing as i mentioned there is dry and wet curing in case of small intestine or in case of sheep and goat intestine and in case of large intestine of course it is drying and then the packaging it should be properly packed for proper marketing so these are the important factors for quality now we will discuss some of the common defects seen in case of casings first is dull color it could be grayish or greenish instead of white or milky white and there may be due to defective cleaning then nodules which may be due to intestinal worms like esophagostoma may round worm in intestine of sheep goat and pigs there could be holes and lacerations due to negligence or rough handling of guts during processing there could be salt burns due to long storage of guts in the salt or packed loosely with air inside sometime patches may also develop due to defective salt or maybe due to the crystal big crystal of salt then cicatrices that is the scars of different uh, type of infection that is ulcers so that when it heals up it becomes sick, a scar or cicatrices that's a defect common then domestics that is the small grease spots in casing then kink that is a twisted loop in the casing or rust that is black spot caused by bacteria or fungus so these are some of the common defects observed after processing here we can see the photographs of cattle casing after drying in the earlier photograph we have seen in case of packing that is the sheep and goat casing that is mostly kept with salting either dry or wet but in case of cattle it is dried we can see with after drying it is flattened and it can be rolled for packing so here briefly we will talk about artificial casings artificial casings are made of collagen or cellulose or even plastic materials that is the flexible plastic materials and naturally they are not edible they are also called synthetic casings and sometime these synthetic casings can be made from animal origin collagen also in that case sometime it will be edible but depending on the origin of the raw material so it should be from healthy animal and handled in a very hygienic way so in the photographs we can see the synthetic casings it will be available mostly like a compact dried stick 
we have to pull it out and cut it whatever length we need and then it, we have to dip it in waters and then immediately it will absorb the water and it becomes soft and flexible so then only it will be used for filling purpose for making sausage but we will discuss in some other lecture more details about the artificial casings or comparison between natural and artificial casings here in the photograph we can see the left side that is the natural casing the sausage prepared using the natural casing and it looks generally they will be in small unit after linking and in the right side both the photographs there we can see the artificial casing so there is a clear distinction in case of artificial casing the diameter will be uniform look and glaze will be different but then they have to be peeled out before eating and then there are uh, different kind of other casings which are used for making salami etc which we will discuss later so now we are at the end of today's lecture before i make a summary there are other uses of casing particularly for making musical strings like guitar violin etc so after making this casing that will be slitted and then it will be dried and it make a very fine thread which will be very strong and that can be used in different kind of musical strings similarly this kind of thread can also be prepared for surgical suture so generally we say cat gut so that cat guts are also prepared from this animal intestine but it has to undergo different hygienic and sanitary processing and sterilization etc so we will discuss all these other aspects in separate lecture so now let me sum up we have discussed about the utilization of animal casing obtained from slaughter so this is an important by product so we call it utilization of intestine or gi tract and it is used mostly for edible purpose to prepare sausage casing so we have discussed how to collect it how to preserve it how to process it different steps and how to pack and what are the different common defects what are the important criteria what are the requirements for processing etc so hope it will be useful for learning thank you for watching